How's it going everybody? Ben from Watch Pokemon here and in this video we're gonna take a little trip down memory lane and look at some nostalgia. This is a Beckett unofficial guide to Pokemon from 2007. Uh, it's a prize guide which we're gonna to get to later. Some of the, the cards that are now very expensive, especially the gold stars, were very very cheap back then. But without further ado, let's get this open. So immediately off the bat, this first page right here is actually kind of funny. Um, let me zoom in just a tiny bit so we can actually see. Um, I also have this little spudger to show some things off. Text gets very, very small when we're back at the prices. I think for now it's fine. Um, first up, this one. Pokemon has generated more than 26 billion um, dollars in worldwide retail sales. That's not nearly true anymore. Like, I think Pokemon is now sitting at 88 billion in total. <laughs> That's insane how much it has grown over these these past few years. Actually, it's not few years, is it? 2007, man. Yeah, that's 17 years ago. I actually had to double check because I was not sure at all. That's crazy, man. 17 years ago. Jesus. Okay. Um, we also have, like, information on Pokemon Mystery Dungeon um, Team Blue and then Team Red. You know, two games that were released for the DS and the Game Boy Advance were kind of in this transition phase. Um, it's really cool. There is a whole page after after some more information. Um, also, this is really, really funny. In August of 2000, a rare promo called Trainer Tropical Mega Battle sold for a whopping $5,600. And it is said to be the highest price ever paid for a single Pokemon card. Only nine of these are in the existence. I don't actually know which promo they're referring to. I think I'll have a photo up here somewhere. Um, I think the last one sold in 2019 for like 12,000. Uh, the hilarious part though that this isn't nearly the most expensive card nowadays. I think the most expensive Pokemon card purchase um, is that PSA 10 Illustrator Pikachu that Logan Paul bought um, a few years back. I think he bought it for like 5.2 million or something crazy like that. And I, I think that will be the most expensive Pokemon card for a really long time. I I don't even know if there is a single Pokemon card that would be more expensive. I think maybe, hear me out, a Beckett Black Label Charizard Base Set First Edition. That might be able to, to fetch a higher price than that, but I'm not sure. There is no Beckett, Beckett Black Label of that card. Uh, but anyways... Let's go over to the next picture, so let me zoom out again. There we are. So we have a lot of information on these pages right here. Actually, let me zoom in just a tiny, tiny bit. So we can actually make out the text. Yeah, that's that's probably fine. So right here, uh, let me take my trusty, trusty pointer. February 1996. This is when the games were first released over in Japan. In case you didn't know, the games were actually first released as Pokemon Red and Green over in Japan. And then a few years later, like two years later, September 1998, we got Pokemon Red and Blue, well, in the US and I guess Europe as well. And also the first season of the, of the anime show um, aired in the US. Um, history in the making for, for this guy right here, these three iconic characters. We've got Ash, Ash, of course, who recently became a champion, which is insane. I haven't followed the Pokemon anime for a really long time, but I saw when he, like, won his first Pokemon League. It was, like, all over Twitter, and good on him. There is now a new protagonist for, um, for the Pokemon anime. And then, of course, 1999, Wizards of the Coast releases Pokemon trading card game Base Set in the US. A set that is super iconic. Of course, the set that started it all. That started that a whole Pokemon craze. Insane. Also, this is kind of interesting. All Nippon Airlines introduced Pokemon decorated airplanes on select flights between Japan and the US. So this is what these looked like back in the day. I think there are still quite a few in use. I think there's like 11 of them in total that are still on use or in use. Um, definitely cool. You're traveling in style when you're flying with one of these. 
We also also have back here like the Pokemon trading card game for Co Pokemon or for Game Boy Color. That was a really, really fun game. I used to play that all day, every day, basically. If I didn't play any of the other games right here, I completely missed this one. Of course, we had the, the first Pokemon movie, which was good. And then Pokemon Yellow Special Pikachu Edition. This is actually the edition that I started out with back in the day. I did play Pokemon Red and Blue later on. But this is, this is the game that I started out with. That's the game that started it for me. Um, what else is here? Of course, the year 2000. We do have Pokemon Gold and Silver, introducing 100 new Pokemon and two new Pokemon types. The light wasn't glaring. With Dark and Steel. Insane. Insane. What else is up here? Pokemon Crystal, of course. Really, really cool game. I, I need to play Pokemon Crystal again, or like the older Pokemon games in general. I haven't played them in ages, man. Haven't played them in ages. Um, we have, of course, Neo Revelations and later Neo Discovery. Or Neo Discovery was earlier than Neo Revelations, sorry about that. Super Smash Bros. Oh, here is the E-Reader, you know, the E-Reader cards, as it's stated right here. The Neo Destiny card hits the shelves, introduces light Pokemon. Um, also revealed this year, Legendary Collection and Expedition, which introduced the E-Reader cards. Um, what else is in here? Oh, of course, the Ruby and Sapphire expansion, which is a bit later than the games. The games released March 2003. My favorite generation. I played these games more than any other games, for sure. And then later on, of course, Emerald. But to be fair, though, I think I played Ruby and Sapphire even more than Emerald. And then here we are, June 2003, the EX Ruby and Sapphire card game hits the shelves and introduces Pokemon EX. Also released later this year, Aquapolis, Skyrich, which is infamous for being the last set that Wizards of the Coast did. EX Sandstorm, EX Dragon, and then EX Ruby and Sapphire being the first set that Nintendo then printed. We also have some other other stuff right here, more EX, more EX stuff. Some more trips down memory lane. I don't think there's anything really, really interesting here. Of course, we have um, 2005 with EX Deoxys. EX Deoxys, a very infamous set. This set does contain the, um, the Rayquaza Black Star. Famous for being actually not the most expensive gold star. I think people tend to forget that. Um, the Espeon Gold Star and Umbreon Gold Star from the Pop series are way more expensive than the Rayquaza. That's not to say that, Ray that Rayquaza is cheap, though, by any means, as we're going to get to see later on. Uh, but yeah, here we are with the 2006 uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Force or Red Rescue Force for the Game Boy Advance. And then Blue Rescue Force for the Nintendo DS. Really, the Nintendo DS must have been released um, in 2006 or somewhere like that. Damn, that's that's pretty long ago. I could have sworn it was like earlier. That just goes to show how old I am, eh? Okay, and here's a guide how to play the trading card game. It's probably outdated by now. Maybe the the main points are still are still good. But actually, the Kingdra down here, I still have that card in German. It's in very, very rough condition. But I do have that card. Very rough condition, unfortunately. One of the few cards that survived the Great Purge. Um, some more tips and tricks. And here we are with the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon page that I've alluded to earlier. We also see, like, some... Some... I don't want to say screenshots. Like, some shots from the game themselves. Really, really love these games. Also played, I actually played the blue one because I did have a Nintendo DS back then. Yes, yes, I had a Nintendo DS. Very good. Um, really, really love that game. I think that might have been one of the very, very few games that I ever 100 percented And it was really, really tough. Well, it wasn't difficult per se, but it was very tedious because some of the legendaries had very low recruit rates. So you'd have to be very, very... It was very tedious, basically. And then, of course, you you had to take a quiz before every game, and then depending on your answers, you'd get a random Pokemon right here that correspond to the answers. I don't even know which one I got when I first played. Might have been Cyndaquil. Might have been Trico. I, I'm really, really not sure. No clue which one I've gotten out of these. Uh, but the quizzes are very, very cool. There's actually like a web page where you can do them. 
So if you're interested, I can link that below. Um, Pokemon Ranger, a spin-off that, that's not really my favorite. I did play, I think, both games. I think there is a third one, but that might have been Japanese exclusive. Not totally sure, but they weren't really my favorites. I still remember, though, um, it might have been the first Pokemon Ranger. Um, that was a game where you can actually get Manaphy, and you could transfer it to Diamond and Pearl, I want to say. So Generation 4. I kind of still remember that, so I did that. Here we have Pokemon Dash. Man, that brings me back. I actually got Pokemon Dash for Christmas one year. That was really, really cool. Um, I did play it a bit. Didn't like it that much, of course. I was more the the mainline type and then probably, um, probably for Mystery Dungeon. Um, but it's still very near and dear to my heart since I got it for Christmas one, one year. And here we are. Pokemon Emerald. Cheats, Coats, and Tips. And then if we zoom in right here. Catching Mew. The only way to get Mew in the game is by getting the old Sea Shard. This is an item that is only available through a special event outside the game. So that game, or that um, event, was a Japanese exclusive event, I'm pretty sure. That event was not a thing in, in America or Europe. So Japanese exclusive, but it was the first, and I think it might now be the only way to legitimately catch a Mew. There have been multiple events where they give Mew to you. Um, like recently, I think last year in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you would get a Mew gifted to you. But this was one of the few chances where you actually got to to catch a Mew. I don't know if this one is shiny locked. I don't think it is because I've seen people catching shiny Mews um, from this generation. So this might not be shiny locked. Um, maybe the only way to get a shiny Mew right about now. And here we are. The 386 Pokemon. We have way more nowadays. One thing that is really, really funny, let me zoom in for this as well. You see right here, they show us a Charizard or a base set Charizard, first edition nonetheless. And now just look at the the price range for that card in a presumably near mint. Let's just say near mint for $50. $50 for a first edition Charizard base set. Times were were very, very crazy back then, eh? Very, very crazy. I'm not gonna go through each of them because we're gonna look at the, um, the price list anyways. Just one thing that I wanted to point out is this Southern Islands Mew. Um, which I still haven't gotten. I really wanna add this to my collection if the light wasn't glaring. There you go, you can actually read. Um, price range 2 to 5. I think this card is sitting at like 70, um, euros now. So it's gotten a little bit pricey, not as pricey as the Charizard, of course, but definitely gotten a little bit pricey. Cards used to be so cheap, as you're gonna see once we we make it over to the price list. Um, let me see, here we go. This is the start of the price list. Um, let me zoom in just a tiny bit, I suppose. Okay, there we go, that should be fine, It's it should still be legible. I think the light is a little bit glaring. Um, we'll make it through, we'll make it through. So this is a price list. These were the prices back in um, 2007. And prices were were very, very crazy. Um, just look at this. First edition, Wizards of the Coast. We have a complete booster box for 200 to 300 dollars. For a sealed booster box of base set first edition. I don't even know how much a a base set first edition booster box is nowadays. I have no idea. I'm really not into the whole sealed collection anyways. Um, is it a million? Is it a hundred thousand? No clue. Um, I might add it somewhere here on the screen and just for comparison. And then we of course also have the hollows right here. And if we look at number four, Charizard, as I've said, um, between 20 and 50 dollars. Let's just go off the high price right here. 50 dollars for a near mint first edition base set Charizard. That's really, really insane. Insane prices. Insane prices. They get even more crazy, believe you me, because we're going over to the EX series, and specifically we're starting with um, EX Team Rocket Returns. Actually, scratch that. We're not going over to EX series cards um, as of yet. I still wanted to look at Sky Rich, because the, the crystal cards also have gotten expensive, really, really expensive. 
Um, this is this is uh, from Aquapolis, I'm pretty sure. No, this is from... I don't even know where this is from. Um, is this from Aquapolis? No, it is from Aquapolis. I recognize that sign right here. And let me zoom... Oh, it is zoomed in. Um, Lugia, the Crystal Lugia, also pictured here. Um, $20 for a near mint copy. We also have the Kingdra, which is another crystal card, $8. We have the Nido King, $8. The Ampharos, Arcanine. Wait, actually, the Ampharos isn't a um, isn't a crystal, but the Nido King is. The Nido King is a crystal with $8. And then Skyrich. I'm pretty sure this is like one of the most expensive sets out there. It's not mo it's not as expensive as first edition base set, of course. Although I might be wrong. Um, I do remember though, I think booster pack, just a normal booster pack of this um, is like a thousand dollars. Back then, of course, it was five. Right there. That was the normal price. And then a booster box of this. 75 to 90. That's that's super insane. And then the Charizard, which is infamous for being the most expensive of the crystal cards, I'm pretty sure. Here we are, the Crystal Charizard, 146, um, between 10 and 20, or $20. Same goes for the Crystal Celebi. And then all of these other ones. We have Crobat for 5, we have Golem for 5, um, we have, what is this, Ho-Oh for 5, we have Kabutops for 4. Man, it's crazy. Or is it Alec for 4? Well, doesn't matter. Cheap. They were really, really cheap back then. Um, as I've said though, it does get even more, even more crazy once we do get to the EX series. Alright, here we go. It starts all the way here. EX Team Rocket returns. And then we have to go to the very end, as you can already see pictured here. Um, the Mudkip in this book called Shiny, and misspelling Shiny, Shiny Mudkip 12. I actually do have the prices here on my second monitor, so let me show, let me get that up for you. So it used to be $12, the shiny Mudkip. I think right about now it's around $600. Then the the Torchic Gold Star used to be $12, now it's about $800. And then all the way down here we have the Trico Gold Star, which used to be $800 and now it's $14. Absolutely, absolutely insane. The Gold Stars have gotten so freaking expensive. And then this is what I find the most ridiculous right here. EX Deoxys, of course from 2005. A booster box used to be $90. $90. A booster box right now, like almost 20 years later, not quite, almost 20 years later, I think you'd be lucky if you find one for 50000 that's how much one booster box of EX Deoxys is right now. That is very, very ridiculous. Down here are the gold stars. So we have Latias, which was $35. Um, this is currently, I think, around $1,000. Then we have Latios, which was also around $35. Um, the Latios is right about now $1,200. And then we come to the Rayquaza, of course, a card that I would love to add to my collection, but I probably never will. Um, it was $45 right now for a, I think, PSA 7. Oh, by the way, I didn't actually mention this. All the prices I just named are rough estimates for PSA 7s, because PSA 7s are classed as near mint. So that's what I went off off of off, uh, for these prices. So Rayquaza right now, if you're lucky, you'll find one for about three and a half thousand dollars. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Even more ridiculous is the booster box price though. Man, if only I had known, or if only I didn't listen to my to my fellow, um, whatchamacallit, to my fellow classmates when they said Pokemon is not cool anymore. And then of course, as you are, as a kid, you listen to them. And you sell all your Pokemon cards. Man, oh man, I'm so mad about about that. Actually, I didn't I didn't have a gold star, I never had. But I had some some very interesting cards, like an Umbreon EX. And I'm really sad that I sold that one. Okay, I think there's two more sets that I want to look at um, for gold stars. I think one of them is EX Delta Species. Oh no, EX Delta Species, I was right. Um, so EX Delta Species contained the Groudon Gold Star. Which is, if I can... Where's my camera? Right here. So, the Groudon Gold Star 
which was 25 that right now is around $600. Um, then we have the Kyogre Gold Star, which was also around $25. Um, that one right now is around $500. And then the Metagross Gold Star, that was also 25 that one right now is around $600. Not as crazy as the last three. Actually, I don't even know why EX Deoxys of all the, the EX sets is the most expensive. I mean, of course, Rayquaza is probably the coolest Gold Star, but these three, I think I have them on the screen here somewhere, are also really cool. I mean, all the Gold Stars are, in my opinion. All the Gold Stars are really, really cool. I think there's one more set that I want to look at, and it's the Regis. So the Regis should be here from EX Legend Maker, and I, I am correct. Very good. I do know my EX series sets and cards. Um, the Regis, which is the coolest of the Regis, don't at me, um, used to be $25 right here. Um, that right now is around $300. Um, the Regirock also... Oh no, this was actually $20, the Regirock. Reggie Rock Gold Star, they actually name it Star right here. And that's also around $300 right now. And then the Reggie Steel, which used to be $25, that one is around $400 right now. So some of them are still somewhat affordable. Um, but then, of course, the Latias, Latios, and Rayquaza are just completely unaffordable. What I wouldn't give to have some of the Gold Stars, probably not all of them. But if I were to buy some Gold Stars, it would definitely have to include the Rayquaza as the crowning piece. So I did actually wanted to check the price for the Mew Gold Star back in the day, but unfortunately the the price guide just ends after EX Crystal Guardians. Um, the next set after Crystal Guardians was Dragon Frontiers, which is where the English version of of the Mew is from, the Mew Gold Star. Um, I think it's going to be around the same price um, as the other Gold Stars we have seen so far, so between $20 and $40 back in the day. Um, I don't even know how much a a Mew Gold Star in English is. I think I saw a PSA 7 a while ago for around a thousand dollars, I want to say. But I'm I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure of the price currently. And they are all over the place. Um, but anyways, this is probably the only Gold Star I'll ever own, if we're not talking about the reprints from Celebrations, of course. Still very, very happy that I do own this one. One of my favorite Mew cards, of course. I love it. Uh, but anyways, I guess that does it for this video. There really isn't anything else. Um, back in the day, you could actually buy these right here, these booster packs. Let me zoom in for, for this last bit. There we go. So what, what, hang on, let me, let me see. What could we buy? So we could buy a Legend Maker. We could buy EX Delta Species, EX Holland Phantoms. What's down here? EX Crystal Guardians. And I think all of them were between like, like 10. Yeah, here we have 10. Um, Crystal Guardians was 13, Legend Maker 10, EX Delta Species for 10, and then Holland Phantoms for 13. Man, cards used to be super, super cheap. And then on the on the last page right here, maybe I can still send this in and get that free EX Deoxys booster pack. Hey, I doubt it. It would be kind of funny to try though, uh, but I think it does say on the bottom down here only for US residents. So, well, that's me excluded. <laughs> that is me excluded. Um, well, but anyways, I guess that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane as much as I did. It's kind of nice to just, like, go on a trip of nostalgia and relive some of your old memories. I mean, I guess that's a sign for showing how old I am. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then a like would be greatly appreciated. If you didn't, then give it a dislike. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like, so I can try to fix that for future videos. Other than that, right here is a video that YouTube thinks is best suited for you. Right here is the subscribe button. Click this one first, then click this video. Check out any of the other videos in the description below. And I hope we'll see you in the next video. Peace, peace, take care.